Hi, this is Tara. Today let's study Sutra number 32. Also wishing all of you listening a very happy Diwali. What does Sutra number 32 stay, say? It says, Tat Pratishedha Artham Eka Tattva Abhyasa Tat Pratishedha Artham That counteracting purpose Eka single Tattva principle Abhyasa practice so, in Maharshi Vedavyasa's commentary, he is translating it as for their prevention, habituation to one truth. Now, he says these distractions uh, are antagonistic for samadhi and they have to be checked by, by practice and desirelessness. That is what we studied earlier as uh, Abhyasa and Vairagya. So, he says it is to finish the subject of practice. That for the prevention of the, these obstacles, habituation to one truth is very important. To, so, but however, this is explained a little more complexly in Maharshi Vedavyasa's commentary because he is also talking about the other schools of philosophical thought such as Buddhism, such as Tantra, which use different symbols and which believe in different uh, stages at which the mind cognizes an object. Now, these are highly technical, philosophical uh, understandings of the mind. So, I won't go into it in too much detail. But if you are a student of philosophy, if you have studied different schools of thought, different tenet systems, you will understand that each school, even within Buddhism, there are different schools of thought that believe that the mind exists, the mind doesn't exist ultimately. Um, what kind of cognition does the mind have? Does it cognize the object on seeing first, seeing second, all of these things. So it's highly, highly technical. But basically what Maharshi Vedavyasa is saying that if you have, if you don't believe fundamentally in the distracted mind and you think the mind is only, uh, you know, um, uh, created anew with each cognition, if there are these technical sort of differences, then that will not work. You have to be, uh, uh, you have to focus on a single principle. Swami Satyananda explains it a little more in detail. He says, for removal of those obstacles and accompanying symptoms, the practice of concentration on one principle has to be done. Now, Patanjali has recommended the qualifi uh, for qualifications such as Shraddha, Virya, etc. for those who already have a sound sort of practice and base. But for those of us who are weak, a little weak and uh, distracted, and have the distracted mind, he is recommending intense devotion and the japa of Om. So in this sutra, he is telling us the way to overcome the obstacles. And this involves the concentration of the mind on a single tattva. Now we have to understand the meaning of this. He says, if you have a practice of a mantra and a symbol, you should not keep changing it. Okay, You should not jump from one to the other. If you are serious about realization, what happens when you jump from one mantra and symbol to another is that obstacles start arising. And he says we see this especially in schools of philosophical thought such as Tantra and Buddhism in which the students use multiple symbols and multiple mantras and obstacles keep arising for them. And he says that if you change it, be sure you will come to grief. Okay, so he says uh, if you keep changing the mantra, Confusion will arise in the mind of the student and a wise teacher will never allow this to happen. So a wise teacher will keep the student on the mantra that he has been given even if it has been given by a previous guru. Okay, But he also clarifies with the caveat that see inherently there is no difference between the symbols. So if you have a favorite deity is Ganesha or Lord Shiva or whatever it really doesn't matter. What he's saying is once you pick a symbol and a mantra, stick to it. Don't keep shifting from one to the other because that is what creates the, it keeps the distraction in the mind. It doesn't focus the mind and concentrate it eventually into samadhi, which is our aim. Swami Vekananda explains it very simply. He says to remedy this, uh, this practice of one ob object should be made, one subject should be made. So he says making the mind take the form of one object for some time will remove all the obstacles. Notice that he says some time. So each of the 
gurus they change their the 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 explanations are a little different they're very nuanced so it's important to read multiple bhashas so you understand the layers of meaning that a uh, sutra like this can have also because it's a very important sutra he is telling you not to jump now especially in the modern age most of us have different favorite deities and you know we don't really stick to one thing which are different mantras at different times so how do we apply this so each of the gurus says a slightly different take on it so it's important to just read as many versions as you can and see what applies to you and it's always good to check with your own teacher as well so um making the mind take the form of one object for some time will remove the obstacles and he says this is general advice and in the following sutras patanjali will expand upon it and explain uh, how to apply it precisely bk sangar says that adherence to single minded effort pre- uh, prevents these impediments and to remove these 13 imp- impediments and prevent their recurrence several specific methods have been described however he says that most commentators have concluded that ek ekatatva is devotion and surrender to god that is ishvara pranidhana but he says this is beyond the average person's capacity so if surrender to god was possible then all of us would do it right why should we go through the process of yoga and you know all yamas niyamas asana pranayama why just surrender to god and you're done he says because surrender to god is beyond the capacity of most ordinary people when you talk about real surrender he gives the example of somebody like ramana maharshi somebody like um, ram krishna paramahamsa mahatma gandhi these were people who had actual surrender to god so for the rest of us the practice of yoga the all, all eight limbs of the ashtanga are very very important and he says you cannot give up the practice until there is purification of body mind and spirit you cannot even reach the level of the kind of surrender that is required so osho says to remove these meditate on one principle he sees it as a continuation of the previous four sutras and he says the one principle that patanjali is talking about is just om just chant om chant the pranava and your obstacles will be removed Bhavra Stola Miller says the practice of focusing on a single truth is the means to prevent these distractions. So, uh, and she says, she says that this practice f- focuses the mind on a single truth, the nature of one reality. So, if you chant one principle, one symbol, one mantra, then the mind automatically becomes focused. So, this was Sutra number thirty-two. Please do come back tomorrow for Sutra number thirty. Do like share subscribe and leave comments and questions if any